my name is Laila Hotait and I am an artist and filmmaker living between Mexico, Lebanon and Spain. And today I will talk to you about why I think that we are all migrants. I will ask a few questions and propose a few ideas and all what I will say is neither Finnish nor conclusive, uh, neither closed ideas and I might change my opinion very, very soon. And this uh, short talk is about this. It's about having a liquid and changing approach to life and art creation. As this is what I believe migrants teach us. I did a thorough research on Lebanese filmmakers, on Lebanese migrant filmmakers living in exile. And it took me years to complete. And part of it is made it into a book I just published. It's called We Will Always Have Beirut. And today I will be talking about one of the chapters that uh, happened to make it into the book, to make it into the book. I will propose you to think and to reflect about what is it to be a migrant, about what is it to be a person in displacement, what is what I call the nation or the homeland of nostalgia. And what do I mean by nostalgia as a creative tool, as a possibility to create new futures? and new horizons. I consider that the present consists both of the past and the future. That is to say, the present comprehends uh, and contains the seeds of the past. Uh, and seeds, I really mean it to be plural. And uh, the shadows, also in plural, of the past. So if we understand time is just a very linear way, if we understand time, in just a very linear way, it would be terrible and devastating to many of the Arabs and Muslim migrants in displacement today and for the new generations to come. Because what kind of future will they be facing with such a terrible and painful present? But if we conceive time, not in a linear way, but as composed by layers, we can see that nostalgia used creatively could operate as a tool that could serve to rebuild the past and then try to address a more complex way of understanding and observing the present and then generate a new and different future with new possibilities. In art and films, that's what creators do, right? To reinvent creatively the past and turn it not only into a solid, concrete present, but into future complex possibilities. So basically, I am proposing here to have a different attitude when we're talking of what is it to be a migrant or a, or a person in displacement. It was Johannes Hofer, a Swiss doctor in 1688, who proposed the word nostalgia to talk about what Swiss soldiers in displacement were feeling. This word is made of a combination of two Greek words. The term nostos, which means return to home, and alja, which means the desire. So nostalgia could be seen not here not as a passive attitude, but as, as a motivation for an action. And in the concept of nostalgia, we find both action and estrangement, two of the main ingredients for our creation. So that's why I talk about the nation or the homeland of nostalgia. But how can a nation be made of nostalgia? We like to think that we are part of a solid project, a nation that has walls, that has clear material rules, that we are attached to something extremely true and material. But there is nothing farther from the truth and from a real sense of freedom. Because we are all in constant displacement, displacement and in a constant process of detachment from our own families, from our own selves when we go from one phase to another in life. And the so-called migrants really know it because they really live it. Stuart Hall stated, migration is a one-way one -way trip there is no home to return to. So, when I talk about the nation of nostalgia, 
I start from a first hypothesis that consider the migrant exiled person is aware of three spaces. The country of origin, the new place of welcome, and a third space, what I call this homeland of nostalgia. This third place would be, have been built by and with longing, with the memories in mu uh, influenced by multiple feelings and bringing together dreams, hopes, and frustrations. Memories that are both collective and very, very personal. And they conform this final space, this immaterial third space that migrants are living and from where they are going to create their artwork or their films. I will explain again these three places a little bit more. When we talk about the first place, in the case of the Arab migrant, it would be their country of origin, let's say Sudan, Iraq, Libya, Lebanon, any of these countries that are facing now hard situations in terms of wars and international or transnational invasions. In the case of Lebanon, it was a long civil war which meant that the space of reference, or which means that the space of reference and origin is being threatened. The second space is the real place of residence where normally there are no work conflicts beyond the personal conflicts and perhaps those deri derived from the status of being an immigrant. Racism, Islamophobia, or any shape or form ignorance in general may take. The third space would be the forge place during their stay outside. It is the result of a mixture of personal memories, collective memories, and the devastating images that come through the news of a series of wars and endless invasions. <coughs> so when these migrants return to their real or physical Lebanon or whichever it is their place of origin, they will do it by calibrating reality through their own and very personal nation of nostalgia. And most likely, both internally and externally, clashes will take place. Although there is a physical limitation in a human beings, in human beings, that prevents us from being in, one, in more than one space at the same time, or to occupy a physical space greater than our bodies, the work of art, and in my case I always think about films, is a reflection of the ability to overcome through reason and imagination these physical barri barriers and reflect something that is more accurate to the truth and to reality. That we, that you through our minds and our experiences and nostalgias, inhabit different spaces at the same time. So real space real space then is multiple and complex and it is not material anymore and it's not solid any longer and of course it has no walls. I conducted many interviews and I analyzed many films made by Lebanese emigrant exile directors and in all of these films especially their first work what they did basically is they materialized they made into physical film this nation of nostalgia. So there was a way for them to complete a total personal identity and be able to carry out with their next film project and their own lives. Post-war Lebanese film production is, as all Arab film production in general will be very, very soon, if not, it's already essentially transnational. Arab cinema and its filmmakers will have many houses and many homelands and will be part and a key player of the future liquid landscape of world cinema. A world cinema that is no longer made of solid nations, like the world in general, but of talented people, individuals, communities, in new conditions and circumstances. We don't know yet, but that might be more similar to the ones lived, these multi-realities lived and proposed by the nomads and the Bedouins that they have been living for s centuries, of for centuries than the stories and legends told in patriotic anthems. Because these directors and artists that already do not fit into a single identity or place 
conform with the rest of immigrants and the children of immigrants, a new transnational group that is probably the seed, the powerful seed of a new interesting real future. Many Arab and migrant artists and filmmakers today, artists in general, probably went to the ruins, to the physical and immaterial ruins of the past to understand and expose the present and to propose a possible future, trying consciously or unconsciously to build al alternatives, possibilities for a new different future by revisiting, questioning and transforming the way we look into the past. Artists and filmmakers in general, and migrants in particular, practice a sort of archaeology of emotions, a look for answers and even for more questions in the ruins of our pains and our shames. And I guess this is art making, to make to propose the questions that can lead to a more pros prosperous avant-garde thinking development, something that society deeply needs today and in the close future. There is only one way out of this samsara, of this wheel of constant deep suffering we are all living in, detachment. So migrants are now here in large numbers to remind us of our future and our past one that is not built upon solid and closed nations. So I propose that we look at art creation as a sort of archaeology of the estrangement we feel propelled by a reflective nostalgia for the past, the present and the possibilities of the future. And this approach concerns and reflects more accurately the creation of Arab artists in displacement or living, surviving and estrangement in their own countries. And I encourage you, I encourage you to realize how you and all the people surrounded you are in a constant state of migration because we are all in displacement, in a permanent process of detachment. And instead of resisting it, we need to embrace it. It's going to be a more complex, liberating process, a process that is going to lead us to actually look up front to freedom and understand what it means to be free. And it will be from this freedom that new forms and new narratives will be born. And we really need in cinematography and in art new narratives, new structures, new subjects. If you want to span this talk a little bit more, I'm sharing with you through a couple of links to videos I made both with my sister, Nadia Hotay, she's also an artist and filmmaker. One that is forever attached <laughs> to this internet talk that is called Beirut Coming Back to You is Not Painful, where the Lebanese migrant uh, filmmakers Nicole Bezian, Ziad Dwayri and Ghassan Selhab talk about their own process of creation and nostalgia. And I will share another link, probably for a more limited time. Uh, that is a short film and a video installation. It's entitled The Night Between Ali and I. Uh, it talks and it deals with the assault of the Bank of America that took place in Beirut back, back in 1973, a piece where me and my sister create our own version of official history. And we talk about the history of the defeated which is part of our own personal um, nation of nostalgia. I, um, I hope you're interested. Uh, of course, if you want to learn more about Lebanese cinema and about Lebanese migrant cinema, you can get the book online or in bookshops. And I will, more than anything, I just hope that this concept of nation of nostalgia can help you in your future creations and um, researches. So thank you so much for being there on the other side. I am here in this side, which is the same one as yours. So thank you so much.